Hey everybody, so I'm going to talk a little bit about a uh, ear related topic today. Uh, it's kind of an ear and balance related topic. Uh, and that topic is called Meniere's disease. Uh, that's spelled M-E-N-I-E-R-E apostrophe S, Meniere's disease. Uh, so this is a problem uh, that causes uh, hearing symptoms and uh, dizzy symptoms. Uh, and usually, you know, most people think about this as a specifically a dizziness and balance problem, but there are definitely problems with the hearing and the ears as well. So what is Meniere's disease? So we don't actually really understand why people get this problem, but here's what we do know. So the inner ear, so this is the part of your ear where the nerves and the sensors for hearing and balance exist. Uh, and this part of your ear, it's actually encased in bone, kind of deep inside, past the eardrum, past the middle ear space, uh, is where the inner ear is. And there's two parts of it. There's the, the part that uh, senses hearing, that's called the cochlea. Uh, it looks a little bit like a snail, if you ever see a picture of it. And then there's the other part, the organ of balance. Uh, and this has uh, a few different parts to it. But both of these areas are basically fluid-filled structures. Uh, and the fluid in the inner ear is actually supposed to be there. Uh, sometimes people talk about fluid in the ears for ear infections. That's fluid in the middle ear space, which is not supposed to have fluid in it. The inner ear is supposed to have fluid in it. Uh, the problem with Meniere's disease, that we're, the topic of this video, is that there's actually too much fluid in the inner ear. So if you imagine, uh, you know, filling up a water balloon, you know, if you fill up that water balloon too much to where it's almost bursting full of fluid, that's kind of the, the idea with Meniere's disease, that there's, there's too much fluid in that space in the inner, in the inner ear. So, you know, for whatever reason, that excess of fluid causes a specific set of symptoms and syndrome, and we call that syndrome Meniere's disease. So the most bothersome symptom, I think for most people with this problem is uh, vertigo attacks. So typically the story is uh, severe attacks where they'll feel like, you feel like the room is spinning Usually there's significant nausea and vomiting, uh, and this goes on for several hours, you know, anywhere from one to four hours, uh, and then goes away. So, you know, when these things come on, people are pretty much out of commission, incapacitated, and they just have to kind of lie down and wait for it to stop. Uh, and typically with the Meniere's disease, these attacks will come and go on some regular basis. Uh, in addition, there are some other symptoms specifically with the ear. So uh, these include, uh, number one, so fluctuating hearing loss. So you'll see the patient will kind of feel the hearing kind of goes out and comes back and changes over time. Uh, in addition, there's uh, fluctuating fullness in the ear. So you'll, your ear will kind of feel like it's plugged up and pressure. And this can be very intense and almost bordering on painful. And that comes and goes as well, it fluctuates. And finally, there can be a roaring uh, noise in the ear, uh, a roaring tinnitus, as we call it. Uh, and that, again, can come and go, kind of depending on the symptoms. And a lot of times these things all come together. You know, the, the ear plugs up, the hearing starts to go, and then the dizzy attack comes. Uh, so that's kind of the typical symptoms we see with Meniere's disease. Uh, and this is, unfortunately, kind of a chronic problem. Uh, it can last for years. Uh, eventually, over time, typically about eight to 10 years after onset, usually it does sort of burn itself out. So uh, there may be some chronic, you know, hearing loss, but typically the dizzy attacks and the vertigo kind of goes away over time. Um, so that's sort of how Meniere's disease is and, you know, what kind of problems it causes. Uh, I think I'll probably do a future video that talks more about you know, how we evaluate Meniere's disease and what sort of treatment options there are for it. Uh, fortunately, there are good options to help people feel better with it. Um, it's not something we can cure, but usually we can manage the symptoms and make it a lot less of a, a bother than it would be otherwise. So anyway, uh, that'll be it for today's video, and I'll talk to you guys again soon.